second there, so right on two o'clock, of course. Anyway, so what we're going to look at today is, is Code 4, which is an area of, of um, the Don Man data and, and the donor screen specifically, where sometimes we need to put um, a series of codes or some information that won't quite fit into the normal structure of the system. Okay, so some of the things we're going to look at is, is what Code Pool actually is, uh, where you'll find it on the donor screen, how it sort of interrelates with uh, mail lists, etc., where you can go to actually create the codes and create the structure. And um, we'll look at, you know, using the appeal selection with Code Pool Records to select people based on what we put there, and also reporting and, and other ways that you can enter the actual data. Okay, so that being said, I get out of uh, here, we'll go into our donor record. So at the bottom of your donor screen, you'll see there's a button down here called Code Pool. So if perchance I'm using the mailing list, when you put a mailing list in, you'll see the list here will automatically create a Code Pool record. So at the moment, the Code Pool button down here is in black, so the text is black to indicate there are no Code Pool records for this particular donor, for this one anyway, it's, it's anonymous. But if I were to say, well, this is a real donor and I want to add that record to the newsletter list, then when I refresh the screen, you can see the system's already created an entry in here saying today we've created a mailing list for this donor that's under the newsletter. Okay. There are other fields on the code pool screen itself, which if I double click and open up, will show you the whole screen that goes in. So in this case, it's got my operator code to say I created this record. The master code, because I've created it from the mailing list button, is mlist by default. And this is the only code that for you know, most organizations, or just about everyone at the moment, I think, uh, will happen automatically. Okay. So from there, it's got the code, and then the data was added. There is also a code 2 field, and there's two numeric fields. Unfortunately, these are full number fields, they're not decimals or anything, so they can't be used for time. But then you also have this box at the bottom here where you can put comments in. So if perchance there was something that you wanted to record that was a bit more um, broken down or reportable than you know what the normal notes are, then we can use this sort of thing. So one of the things that people have used this for in the past is like doing a survey. So if in my survey I said, look, I've got a number of questions and there's different replies to each question. So what I can do is set up a series of codes to reflect that, and then I can utilize that in this code pool area. So if I get back to the menu, we need to create the actual codes themselves. If we go into housekeeping, on the left you'll have donor descriptive codes, the same as you would do for your donor source, donor type, all of the, the other codes that we're using primarily. And then on the left hand side again, you'll have additional code menu. So it's in this menu here that you'll see there's an option here to, to add or edit code pool master codes, or the code pool codes, or the code pool code 2 codes. Okay. The master code and the code pool codes are interlinked. So just like on your donor screen where you have donor type and there's a certain drop down list that's associated with that field or extra codes or source codes, etc. This is saying that when I set up a master code, I can then create subcodes under that so that I can utilize the two uh, hand in hand. So to create a new master code or to see what's there, I can go in and have a look at what's there. So you can see at the moment I've created four here for four questions for the survey, which is basically mailings that people prefer, newsletter frequency, appeals that they want to uh, receive from us, and you know contact preference. So of course most surveys will be much bigger than that, but for the sake of you know what we're trying to, to show you today, I've sort of stuck with that and just kept it fairly simple. So under those four master codes, we go back to the menu, I can now go into add or edit the code pool codes, and at the top of the screen, it then asks me which master code I want to use. So if I said I'm going to use survey question one, then the drop down list would be the answers relating to survey question one. And so that's how we can sort of start building the structure to go through and, and add that to records. If I was doing um, an entry for someone manually, so I can go into the donor's record, 
Okay, so I find a donor. Okay, so this person here has just responded to the survey and I now want to put the details in. Okay, so there are two ways that we can do this. I'll show you doing it sort of one at a time from the donor screen and then I'll show you an alternate method which is better when you're doing a whole lot of people. So if I click on code pool, at the moment there are no entries in code pool for this record. So if we click on add record at the bottom of the screen, I can then say this person has responded to survey question one. And when I go across the code, you can see it's restricted to say these are the answers that are available for that particular one. So if I said, well, this person wants the appeal, I could just send it through and save that. There's nothing else to do. So add a new one. So you can see that this is ideally not the quickest way to be able to do this. So if I said then they also want the newsletter. So with the newsletter, or if I've got a, a um, something I want to say, well, they just want the newsletter, say, monthly or quarterly or annually or whatever it might be, the two ways I can sort of capture the data is to create a question related around that or have this here where I'm using the code 2 to say this person wants the newsletter and then to say, well, this is the frequency that they want the newsletter. So when I look at it later, it's much easier to decipher that that's what it means. So if I go through, so now I can see on here that to survey question one, this person has said they want the newsletter, and code two is now giving me the information to say that they want that monthly. If perchance we're dealing with um, organisations or, or branches or anything like that where we might have a number of different mailings that we send out to people, then we could also use the number fields then to say for this record here, I need to send 10 newsletters to that particular place and again that's data that we can then export when we do the actual extraction of the data. So as I was saying, when we're doing that you can see that's very slow to actually update you know, a number of different uh, questions and the replies for that person and where I might have a number of people that um, have got the same sort of replies then I, I don't want to do that in a, all the way through. There is a, a program that's been created that will allow me to do a quick entry of the code pool records. So basically what I can do is say, look, I've got in here, I want to find my donor. So if I said I want to do donor, say 99, that will bring up donor 99 on the screen. Then I can say I've got survey question one, and I can then choose their reply. Yeah, so I can, again, I can say, well, they want event mailing. They want the newsletter. And again, if I do the newsletter, I can then go across and say they want it quarterly. Survey question three, okay, saying what mail outs does the person want or which appeals. So again, I could say, well, they want the, the spring one and they want the winter one. Okay, And then I can just go through and say, yes, I want to save that. And that will then save that to the donor's record. Yeah, so if I had somebody else, I could now say I'm going to do down 120. So I just find another person. And because the codes are sitting there, it means that if this person's replies are exactly the same or they wanted the same newsletters, then that would automatically save back to the donor and do it very quickly instead of the way that I was doing it before. And of course, that will depend on the, the speed that it takes will depend on you know, how complex your survey is. But, you know, as Mario, you know, goes through a little bit later, now, I can use code pool for all sorts of things. In this case, survey is you know, something that I can show that there is a master sort of level and then there's a sub-level under that. So you can use it for you know, any sort of thing that you want to capture. So it might be something to do with you know, um, people visiting or people having certain afflictions or, or they might have um, things that you want to record where notes really doesn't cut it from my being able to report on them later. Because while it's in code pool, I certainly then have got the option to go through. And when I do my um, selection of people to mail out, I can then go through. And when I create my selection file, one of the tabs up the top here, you'll notice, is really geared around selecting records from the code pool entries that we've put in. So if I call this. Okay. So the normal things that will go through, I can select people based on dollar amount, um, last donations, etc. 
and the same sort of thing might exist where I'm going to ex select or exclude you know people based on mailing code. If I'm trying to get the actual numbers, depending on what I, I've you know put into the code for records, then I might in this case say no, I don't want to exclude the no mail people because what I'm trying to report on or, or get a group of people is nothing to do with the mailing. It's something extra that I've put through there. So instead of now having to go through all of these fields one at a time, which you certainly can do, but if I then go up to code pool, I've then got the two options here where I can select by code for records or exclude. So anything you do with the uh, donor appeals or selection process, if we can say, look, I've got two things to exclude and uh, you know 30 things to include, then you sort of go, well, what's easier? So I'd do the exclude. So whichever way is the, the easier path to sort of um, not have too many things in the criteria because the more things you have, the more things, of course, get, we can muck up and, and it's not going to go. From there, if I go to code now, I can see I've got the same sort of thing. I can say I want uh, code one. If I leave it at that point there, it will then select everyone who's replied uh, to the survey for question one, no matter what their reply was. But if I want to find people who've given a certain reply, then I can say yes here. And now I can go through and say, okay, I'm just looking for people that said they want the newsletter. Okay, so that's the only one I want to select. In this case, I'm not worried about the dates because I, I didn't actually put a date in there that was relative to the data itself or the number. But if I choose that and go through, saying I don't need to do anything else, but I could. I could also say I'm looking for people who've got, you know, survey question three is quarterly or annual or monthly. So I can add to the criteria to, to get the list of people that I want. So if I go through, pardon me, the system's now showing that out of my donor records, it's picked up 15 records that have met my criteria. So just like a normal selection, you'll get all of your screens of information showing you everything we've said yes and no to or where we've skipped the screens and there's no reply here, the system's used the default, which is normally in the case of these ones here where it's a, you know, um, a more global collection of people, uh, has just left those blank. All of the others will, will be pretty much uh, as they were. Okay, so as I go down, I can now show that I entered the code pool that I wanted to select by, which was the news under, under the survey question one. Yeah, and it's now showing me that I've got 15 records. So that sort of gives you an idea that even though I've put the data in there, and whether I do it, you know, one at a time from the donor's record, or I do it by using that quick access method, which uh, by, um, by default isn't on the menu. I didn't actually find out about that program until uh, earlier in the day, <laughs> thanks to Murray. Uh, but you know, if it's something that you would be looking to use, then uh, let us know and we can certainly add that onto your menu so that you can do um, this sort of quick entry to the code pool records. Okay. So going back to where we were previously, where I'm using the mailing list, that will by default create a code pool record. Okay. There are ways that we can sort of bulk update the codes and, and we can do things like that as well, um, just like we can do with any of the other you know, codes on the donor's record. So if we said, look, oh, we've created these records or I've got all of these people that I want to now add the code to, then we can certainly do that in bulk, the same as we would do for any other field. So if we wanted to change all the you know, um, records in here that had, you know, maybe they might have an I or a P, and you said, look, I want to make the code more descriptive, then I can go through and do that as we sort of, uh, I, I've got a list of those people, so I've created a selection of people that meet the criteria, and I can then do a bulk change from one code to another, or I can amalgamate a number of codes into one. Using the, the bulk programs as well, we can also say I want to create new records, like new code for master records and the subcodes in bulk for a whole lot of people, where you might even have the same comment that you want to put into that comment field down the bottom. Okay. So the structure of codes that you create here, so you can see at the moment there's one called allergy, there's forms, there's you know, <laughs> prices one, etc. So they're all different ways that I can create my own master list 
and then the sublist under here will be intrinsically linked to the master code here. So I can use code for, for quite a few different things and it's really just to say that sometimes I get to the saturation point on the donor screen here where I can't put any more fields in. If I put, for chance, say, an extra code down here, all I know is the extra code is there or it's not there. I don't have any way to, you know, find records that that was put there on a certain date or do any of that sort of further digging in, but I can do with a code pool record. So there are, is some, um, sorry, <laughs> there, there are some options there and some flexibility that I can utilize when using the code pool record. Um, and there are quite a few places that for, you know, um, data that they're capturing fairly unique to themselves are using code pool to sort of put the information in and then it's a matter of saying, okay, look, I want to, you know, create a custom report. So I might then have to use the VisRep um, report writer to create a report to look, look at the code pool records or I can use the selection file to sort of pull that list of people up. But certainly the information that you'll get in there is, is fairly uh, enhanced compared to just having, you know, the code there or not there. So if we were to look at a donor where I've got some information already, I can go into code pool. So I can see in here, if I can get that to sort, yeah, so I can see here that for the survey question one, they wanted the newsletter, they wanted that monthly, they wanted event mailing, and they wanted appeals. So then under appeals, my survey question three was saying what sort of appeals you know, would the person like to receive? Because once I've got the survey questions, I could then use this to create a selection file of people and then update them on a mailing list. So when I do my selections, I wouldn't have to necessarily worry about the survey results because I'm just trying to get my data sorted out to say, well, you know, what do people want to hear from us? What don't they? Are we sending them too much? Aren't we sending them enough? The whole purpose that you'd be doing a survey in the, in the first place is to try and correlate some of that data where it's then reportable. Um, you can certainly put it in, into a spreadsheet, but it might not be, um, you know, as reportable as having it you know, straight in the donor's record basically under the code pool entries. So you may have a whole lot of different things in here and if you do, you can then utilize the filter down the button, <laughs> pardon me, down the bottom to say you only wanted to see certain sort of things um, on the screen here. This is a, an area of the database that we've sort of looked at and it, and it has been there for quite a long time. Um, and as I was saying, there are a few organizations using it, but the majority of people um, wouldn't know it was there at all or what that button was because when we're using the system daily, you know, you sort of look at the fields that you use and the other ones that you don't, you don't have time to play with and go, I wonder what's in there and what that will do for me. That, that's sort of just highlighting that um, we can sort of utilize the code pool area to do that. So the two, the two ways again for entering was pretty much straight from the donor record. Once I've set up my code structure, I can find my donor. Okay, the same way we would do anything else. We can find them by name or number or whatever it might be. From there, I can go straight to code pool, add a record, and put in exactly what I want. Yeah, but that's all right for a one-off, but certainly for um, you know a bigger list of people, I'd uh, suggest probably using the uh, the quick entry, which is the program I showed you before, as we go through. So yes, using code pool um, to put the, the data in there allows me to say, I want everyone who has had that code uh, created on a certain date or I can use the date itself for things like it may be um, you know money box collections or something like that where I might have a schedule to say I dropped off the money box on this day and it's due for collection on this day using the code pool entry and then I can set up some reports as they will show me everyone who's due in the next week um, you know for whoever it is that goes out and does the actual collections or the changes overs of the money boxes so I can sort of keep tabs on those as they've come in because when it comes in and, and the you know uh, coinage and the money is actually taken out of there, then that's put through against the record as, as a transaction anyway. But it's more just to say, well, I can't actually manage, you know, the, I can use the number itself for if there's a unique number for the money box 
Um, but I can also use the code pool entries to say, well, that's the date we placed it. And if we said, well, you know, by default we sort of give people a month or two months or a, you know, a quarter before we go and collect it again, they can use that as one of the date fields to actually go through and say, now that's the date that it's due for collection, and then we can sort of report on that as we go through. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of an insight of, of what code pool is. For setting it up, it's not a lot different than setting up the actual uh, other codes in the system. The main difference that you'll, you'll find um, when you start looking at these is that on the donor screen, you've got fields like the donor type, the mail code, the, you know, the user code down here, whatever you call it, extra codes, you've got source codes, uh, and a whole lot of stuff. But I can't change the structure of these as such. But with code pool, I can create my own master code and then I can use exactly what I want. And because I've got dates and I've got numbers and I've also got a uh, parameter that I can put notes in against that, uh, it gives you a whole lot more flexibility for what you can actually use that for. So what I'll do now is, uh, after that sort of intro, is hand over to Murray and he'll show you, you know, uh, different ways that you can actually um, also use the code pool or update the code pool. Okay, thank you. Hi everybody. Um, I'd like to begin with by just basically saying that when I try and describe or uh, tell people about the code pool, I like to use a, a, an example which is an al uh, allergies. Now you saw that a little bit with Gary there. So I've just brought up a donor here. Code pool, as you can see, I've already got some records there. And when I go to it, you can see that there's a lot of different records that are there. Many of them are this allergy you didn't use code pool, then when we're on the donor screen, you'd probably have to use extra codes. But the problem there is that you have a limit of eight. So if somebody's got more than, say, eight allergies, or if you want to be able to have other codes like friend and one, as well as recording what allergies this particular person has, the problem is you can only go up to a maximum number of eight. Also, as Gary has mentioned, all you have is the fact that they have some particular form of allergy. They, you don't actually know when they registered that or how severe it is. So by using code pool for, say, allergy as another example, we can put extra information. So, um, for instance, I've got one here, allergy pollen. Um, if I actually double-click that record, you can see that um, pollen or hay fever, um, he registered that um, today. There you go. Um, now. I'm using this number field here to represent whether it's actually a mild or severe case. So for an eight, um, I'm using from one to nine, one being very mild, whereas number nine would be very severe. So what we're saying for this guy, um, he has hay fever and it's quite, um, quite severe. Um, you can also see, again, that I've put something in there saying he's, he takes medication all through spring and summer and filtered air on the house. So the advantage or one of the advantages of using code pool over extra codes is simply that you can have a lot more than eight. Now, using the filter down the bottom, I can say, yeah, I just want to look at the allergy ones. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten, if I'm, I don't know if I counted correctly. So in each case, you can see what his actual allergy is and whether it's a severe case or a mild case and any information you want. We can expand that a little bit further as well. So one of the advantages, you can have as many as you like. Another advantage is that you can actually have multiple records for the same combination of master code and subcode. So he's registered um, today that he had pollen, but I could, if I wanted to, create another record, and again, I'll choose allergy, and I'll give it pollen, and I'll say he registered this 10 days ago. T minus 10 is just today minus 10 days. Uh, I'm not actually using code 2 in this instance. And you know maybe he had a reaction, but it wasn't as severe. So we could just put a number 5 there and you know caused him to sneeze, something like that. And so now I've actually got two records for pollen. 
So you could actually, if you wanted to, record every single time he's had an allergic reaction to, say, peanuts, if he, you know, if he's had an anaphylactic shock or something along those lines. So you can have the multiples there. I think the only difference is they do have to have a different date. But apart from that, then you can have as many of those combinations as you like. So that is certainly a big advantage over extra codes. Um, you've, as I said, you've also got um, the, the date and the extra information, such as whether it's severe or mild. And you've got that uh, extra bit of text at the end there which, where you can record up to 500 characters. Now, if I just clear this filter, so now you can see that I've also got some other forms of um, code pool. So I've got one here for dietary requirements. So, you know, if you run dinners from time to time and you find out that somebody maybe they, um, they're allergic to eggs or in this case fish or whatever it is, um, you can always find that out so that when you are organizing for a ball and that person has bought a ticket, then you can go, okay, well, we need to organize a dinner for them that doesn't include fish or eggs or whatever it is they're allergic to. Oops. Also in there, um, I've got prize. So say you were running raffles from time to time and there were different sorts of prizes. So maybe this person, well, he's already won quite a few prizes, but let's assume he's won another prize. So we simply create a record for him. The master code is prize. The subcode, let's say he's won some, a caravan or something like that. Um, but he did that, he won that today in today's draw. And what I've done in code two here is I've got active or inactive, which probably isn't applicable for anything that I've got here, but I've also got this anonymous and publish. So, you know, if someone's won a big million dollar prize, he might want to remain anonymous. So we can put anon there so that you know that you don't publish that. So um, that's a good thing. And then in the number field, in this case, we could put the value. So maybe it was a $30,000 uh, caravan and, you know, you could put some details in there as to what it was, maybe what the raffle was, anything along that lines, or perhaps something about the caravan, and we save that, and that's there in there as well. So um, that would be this one at the top here with today's date. And so all of those records are there for him, and you can have as many records, copal records as you like for each person of whatever type you like. So. This is a really great place for putting information that doesn't have a home of its own really anywhere else. And so it's almost like your own system of codes, just like on the donor record. OK. Now, Gary mentioned that there are ways of actually updating or creating these records in bulk. So maybe you've, won, you've run a, pri, a, a raffle, and maybe there are like 100 prizes of a bottle of wine each or something like that. If we had a record or a, a type uh, of prize called wine, then what we could do is we could go through and if we, we would have a selection file of all of those 100 people that won the sort of the sub draws and we could then create for them a record. Now to do that, what we have to do is we have to, of course, have the selection file. Now I've got a couple that I can use for that, but I haven't got uh, an option there for prize, uh, for wine. So I'm just going to go in and create a subcode called under prize as the master code. I'm just going to call it wine, and I'll call it a sort of well, let's say wine. Okay. So now that we've got that. In order to actually go in there and do the bulk update, what we need to do is we need to go to, first of all, the, uh, we go into the, your, whatever your organization is, fundraising, and then the Modify History Archive menu, and hopefully you know what the password is for that. And then we go into the Bulk Utility Programs menu, and again, hopefully you know. If you don't, you can always give us a call. So over here, we've got this option here for Bulk Add Code Pool Codes. So when I go into there, any time we do anything in bulk, it always asks if we've got a backup, because quite often when you make a change, if you make a mistake, the only way to get back out of it is effectively to restore. So always think about what you've done since the last backup, and if our last backup was last night, 
and you've done a lot of work, you might organise to a separate backup first, or you might wait till tomorrow and do it first thing after tonight's backup. Anyway, I'm going to say we've got a backup. I've got a selection file here called MM2. It's going to ask me how many in there. If I press enter, it counts them. Yes, that's the right one. There are 12. So I've got three options here. I can create new records, I can update existing records, or I can delete existing ones. Now, the typical thing that you would do would be to create new records. So let's do that. So what's the master code? The master code is prize. The subcode is wine. Um, I'm not going to say whether we can publish or anonymous. It's probably not really a worry. OK, we don't need a date from because we're not changing anything. So I'm just going to put today's date, again, T4 today. Um, the value in the number field is going to be, let's say it's a $10 bottle of wine. I'm not going to worry about number two. And I'll just say um, one as prize in draw, something like that. And yes to continue. And that will then go and create one of those records for all of those 12 people. Um, so when we look at our output, yep, it says we've updated 12 records. So now if I actually go back to donor number 11, which is my first donor in there, I think he was one of the ones in there. And when I go in there, uh, prize, uh, maybe he wasn't one of those ones in there. If he's not, then I think the next one should be. Uh, prize, yeah, here we go at the top, prize wine with today's date, $10, one as a prize in the draw. So where you have a lot of people with the same information, um, like the same copal type records, then it's a very easy process once you've got that selection file to create one of those records for each person. Now, there are other ways of perhaps doing it in bulk where there are things that are different. We have some special programs that can help you there, but that's not going to be covered today. It's basically something you would need to log a support request for. So the last bit that I'm going to talk about is reporting. Now, we don't have any typical reports specifically set up for, um, for code pool simply because it's such a generic option for you that um, doing a specific type report would not really make a lot of sense. So we do need to use uh, generic reporting tools to report on this, apart from the selections that Gary's already covered. Now, one of those ones is reporter. Or is re I'll come back to that. I'm going to actually with the table reports generator. And I'm going to generate a report. Now, I've actually created one. So I'll start off with one that I've already done first and saved it away. And this is for severe allergies. Uh, um, I think it was number three. I hope it was number three. Actually, no, I think in hindsight, I think it was number two. I should have named this a little bit better, but I didn't. OK, so, oh, no, OK, this is not the one I was after, but this one will do. This is going to list those people that have won any form of prize. So um, basically, I'll just do this as a print preview. And so what it's done is down the side, it's given me all the donor numbers that have got at least one prize of whatever sort I've got. And across the top there, you can see what prizes people have perhaps got. So donor number 11 is very lucky. He's won a boat, a car, a caravan, a holiday, uh, four prizes in total. Um, and so down the bottom, you can see that there have been two boats, one car, two caravans, etc., etc. one. So what I'll do is I'll just escape out of here. I'll, I'll go and do another one, which was the one I was hoping I would pick up from the saved report. And I'll do one on, say, well, I'll, I'll start off a bit more general. I'll just say what records anybody has got of the different master codes. So I'm not going to use a saved report. I'm going to do my report on the code pool. And unfortunately, this isn't in alphabetical order. So I've got to sort down until I can find code pool. Uh, there it is, code pool. I'm not going to use a selection file. I'm not going to use a filter because I want to look at them all. And across the page, I want to put the master code. So that'll be prize or allergy or whatever it is. And I don't care about particular values of that. And down the side, I'll look at the donor numbers. And again, I don't care about particular ones of those. 
Okay. Um, now, I'm, not, I'm only going to get it to count, so I'll say no to that and no. Um, I could create a spreadsheet of this if I want, but I won't in this case, but perhaps later I could. Okay. Uh, do I want them in a selection format for later? No. So I'm just going to do my print preview. So what this is showing me are the different types of master codes that are being used. So we've got allergy, diet, and prize. And if I had anything else, um, they would show up here, but I don't. So this is only showing me the ones that at least one person has got. So looking at this, donor number 11 has got 10 allergy records, four dietary requirements, and is won four prizes. So it just gives you an overall summary of those. So that's all well and good. Let's have a look at what I was going to do, and that was the severe allergy. So if I say a severe allergy is anything over maybe type uh, a number of seven. So if I get out of here, I'll just create another one again. So no to that. And again, I have to work my way through and find code pool. Okay. So this time I'm going to create a filter. So instead of looking at all donor record, sorry, all code pool records, I only want to look at those that are, have a master code, which is equal to, and in here if I type allergy in capitals, and I need to press enter so that it appears below before I click on accept. If I don't do that, then there's no filter in effect. Across the top, I'm actually going to put what the subcode is, so that's the um, code one, and I could be specific and say I only want to look at particular ones, but again I won't, and again down the side I'll actually look at the donor number. Okay, don't care about anything in those in particular. Okay, do I want a special item? No, don't want percentage figures, but I will actually say yes, I want to create a spreadsheet. Uh, or a text file that I can read into a spreadsheet. Um, I'll call it mwin1.txt and have to overwrite that. Um, okay, it's going to give me the count. I don't want to save it. And again, I'll just do a print preview on this. Okay, so here's my report. So, ah, oh, okay. What I didn't do and what I should have done is I, as well as when I was setting up that um, filter, I should have also said that the number one field was greater than or equal to seven. So at the moment, this is giving me all people with any form of allergy, but if I'd done it with that filter for over seven, greater than or equal to seven for the number, which I'm using for the severity, then I would have actually got the correct results. Okay, so um, you can set up those reports in any way you like. The file that it created, uh, mn1.txt, I could open that in Excel. Uh, okay, change it to text files, and there it is, I'm in one.txt, I'll just go finish, and basically that's the result that we were seeing on the screen, but now I've got it as a, a spreadsheet, so I'll just close that. Now, the other thing is uh, to use the VizRep. Now, if I go into VizRep, Visual Reporter, uh, I can report on the code pool file. Um, I will do this in donor number master code order. Uh, I'll select my first criteria. I'll say that the master code is equal to, now when I click in here, I can use the little question mark to give me a list of all the possible values. So again, I'm going to go allergy. I'll put another criterion in here, which is what I should have done on the last one in the table report. And I'll say that the number field has got to be greater than or equal to seven. Okay, so for each of those ones that I've picked, what information do I want? Well, I will pick the, um, let me sort this in a different order. I'll pick the donor number, that's always good to have, maybe the date. I know the master code, I don't need to worry about that, but I do put code one there. I'm just double clicking, maybe code two. And I can also go up top here, pick donors and output information about the donors, such as title, did I get that? No, title, better, first name and surname. And so if I just do a quick report, here you can see all the information that we want. So we can see the donor number, the date that they registered it, what the actual um, allergy is, 
Um, in this case, none of these have got anything in code 2. Title, name, first name, and surname. Ah, what I should have done is also output the number field to see how um, allergic they are. So now you can see all of these numbers are greater than or equal to 7. So it's, it's all well and good. We can output that to a, a, um, a spreadsheet, just like we do with anything else. We just simply go to File, Save Report Data as Text, and if I create mn2.text, uh, yes, to override that. Um, it's now gone and created that, and again, I could import that into Excel. Um, the problem, of course, is that where you've got someone like Donor 11, they've actually got four or five, uh, four separate ones, and sometimes you would like that on on the one line, and that's where the um, the table report does better in terms of actually being able to say, yes, they've got a, an allergy to insects, some old nuts and pollens, because you'd actually be able to see that on that report. So um, if you're familiar with VisRep, what I've just done there is fairly straightforward. Um, we have had previous webinars on uh, VisRep, so if you are a little bit rusty on that or you need some help, you can always go and have a look at those um, that webinar as well. So at this stage, we've got probably 10 minutes left, so I'll hand back to Marla now, who can perhaps pass on any questions that you may have submitted. Thanks, Murray. Yeah, just a reminder, everyone, if you do have any questions, to type them in the question box and um, we can read them out. At the moment, Murray, there isn't any questions posted, so we might just give oh. everyone a moment to, uh, if they've got any, to post them. Um, so you just need to open that control panel with the little orange grab tab arrow and type your question in. So we'll, we'll give people a couple of moments, but while we're doing that, I'll um, just alert everyone that we have a new lovely Donman website. Um, still the same address, donman.net.au, so I encourage you to go and have a look there. Um, and our, all of our recorded webcasts are still posted there. It's under the resource tab and then recorded webcasts. And you do need to put in your uh, login for tech support to access the webcast now. So uh, please do take a look and let us know what you think. Okay, a uh, question for you. <laughs> Coraline, uh, Coraline, I think is the name. How do we find the quick code pool entry? Okay, well, um, as Gary mentioned, it's not actually on any menus. So you would need to actually enlist our help to add it to one of your menus. Um, I could show you what to do, but um, it's probably better that um, we talk you through it, although if there's going to be a whole lot of people asking, um, we might perhaps produce a little request, a little document to show you how to do it. But essentially, it's, it's a matter of updating your menus. Um, yeah, I think it's probably better that we don't try and broadcast that in general because you're going to need a password that changes every day anyway. So in order to get into that, you would need to speak to us. So it's probably better, if, unless there's a whole heap of you trying to do it, I think it'd probably be better if you log a, report, uh, a request for support and we can then help you add that to your menu. Thanks, Murray. Um, a question from Anthea about uh, if you had covered the duplicating codes. If you could just refresh that. Um, okay, I'm not quite sure what the question is, but I mean, you can have multiple records. If we go back again and have a look at this record here under code pool, you can see uh, if I sort by, say, master code, um, what have I got? I've got uh, two of these ones that are pollen. So. Um, the only difference here effectively being that there's a date. So if I want to create another one, maybe he's rung up and said, oh, I've just had another allergic reaction to pollen. I can still put one in there for allergy and pollen, and I'll put a date of tomorrow, T plus one, say. <laughs> he's, uh, he's advanced, you know he's going to have an attack tomorrow, and it's going to be really severe, so it's nine, and um, he will suffer tomorrow. So I'm not quite sure if that's quite what Anthony was after, but again, um, if I sort those, we've now got three pollen ones at the top um, with three different days. Anthony so is just uh, clarifying um, if, if, if there is more than one code and you want to delete one. 
Okay, well, we haven't covered deleting. If we delete this one here, we just highlight it, and down the bottom we can say delete record and say yes to that. Um, so if that might be what she means. Um, in the bulk update where you do delete, you've got to match and you've got to put things like the dates and the, the range of numbers, uh, otherwise it won't find the particular one to delete. So if it's to do with the bulk updating and deleting of records, then that would be um, you need to make sure that everything matches before it will actually pick it to delete. Okay, thanks Murray. That looks to be all the questions for today. Um, uh, one more, it's just come through, um, from Anita. I want to use code pool for merchandise sales or promotional purpose, purposes. Do you think code pool is a good tool? Uh, we want to use a quick book code in Donman. Quick book codes in Donman. Does that make sense? Um, quick books, I presume, being the accounting system. Um, I'm not sure it's the ideal thing. I mean, we do have a, a paid uh, extra thing called the product system, um, which may help. But um, you could record what people have ordered, um, put the donation through as just a sales to a sales campaign, and then use the code pool to extract details of anything that they've um, that they have purchased on a particular day. Um, as I said, it's not ideal because it won't necessarily double check that the the items that you've bought match the dollar amount that they've paid, but you could certainly use it to record that information. Um, do you have any thoughts, Gary? Yeah, no, no it's pretty much the same. So, because there is a product module in Donman that's available that when you process the payment, you can you know, say, look, the person's buying you know, three of these T-shirts and two of these hats and things like that, that will also balance and make sure that the dollars equate to, you know, the price of the product, etc. cetera, um, and it's much more streamlined than having to manually then go out and put something in the code pool. And also, when you generate your receipts and things like that, you can also produce a packing list as well of all the items that a particular person has purchased. But, as I said, that is an extra cost option, so therefore, if you only were doing a few small amounts of sales, then um, perhaps the code pool could be utilised for that. It is very flexible, um, but because of the reporting requirements and that, you know, you would probably have to set up your own reports to extract that information on a day-by-day -day basis. Okay. Thanks, Murray. Um, so we'll wrap it up there, I think. So, so thank you, Gary and Murray, for today's webcast, and thank you, everyone, for joining us and your patience uh, when we had a few technical difficulties at the beginning. So our next webcast is scheduled for Tuesday, the 18th of August at 2 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we'll have further details about that topic uh, out to you shortly. And as I mentioned earlier, you can find recordings of all of our previous webcasts at our website as well. Uh, so that concludes our webcast today, for today. Thank you all for joining us and goodbye for now. Goodbye, Bye. everybody.